This video is on more trigonometric integrals. These will involve powers of secant and tangent, and then we'll talk a little bit about how this will apply to powers of cosecant and cotangent as well. All right, so at the top of the screen, you should see some identities and differentiation rules that um, come from Calc 1 and Trig. So the derivative of tangent is secant squared. The derivative of secant is secant x tangent x. And then from Trig, the Pythagorean identity involving those is that 1 plus tangent squared of x is equal to secant squared of x. We can apply these when we're doing trig integrals involving secant and tangent. The idea is what we would like is for either u, equal, u to be equal to tangent x, in which case du is equal to secant squared, or to let u equal secant in which case du is secant x tangent x. And like we were talking about in the previous video on sine and cosine, there are problems where only one of these works. So you have to either pick u equals tangent or u equals secant, and only one of those is appropriate. There are problems where both of those would work fine, and there are problems where neither one would work. Unfortunately, there's not as quick of a rule here you can't say if one of them is odd, let u equal the other one, like you can for sine and cosine. Here, we need to think through the options. Uh, we could come up with cases uh, for this. We're, we're not going to list specific cases to memorize. I'd rather think through the options on this problem. Okay, and so when we're doing this, what you need to think is that we're going to, regardless of which substitution we make, we're going to separate out something for du. And then whatever is not u, then needs to be rewritten in terms of u. So after separating, so after separating du, after you separate, that's what that's abbreviating, after you separate du, the one that is not u. needs an even power. So that it's useful to rewrite in with the Pythagorean identity. So if we think about problem one, we'll write down here in purple uh, what it would look like. If we do the first substitution, we would separate out two secant powers, or two, pa two factors of secant. That would leave four tangents and two secants. And what's here is for the du, and what matters is now the one that's not u. So in that substitution, the one that's not u is secant, so this two is good, meaning that setup's going to work. If we do the other setup, we're gonna separate out one secant and one tangent. That's gonna leave three tangents and three secants. The secant x tangent x at the end is for the du, so we don't really care about that anymore. But now the one that's not u needs to be rewritten in terms of u. u in that substitution is secant, so the three on the tangent is bad, meaning that this is not gonna be a useful way to approach the problem. Okay, so let's work the problem the first way. And so we're gonna choose the u equals tangent and du equals secant squared, and let's get rid of this stuff at the bottom. And let's get rid of the substitution that we don't want. Okay, and we'll work this in blue to match what we've got there. So we want everything in terms of u after we separate out the du. So let's separate out the du first. So we get tangent to the fourth, and we take two of the powers of secant and put it next to the dx. So secant squared x dx is there. The secant squared in the problem, or in the rest of the problem, needs to be rewritten in terms of tangent. Because of the identity at the top of the screen, we can rewrite secant squared as one plus tangent squared 
and we'll reserve this secant squared for the du. So now this is the integral of u to the fourth times 1 plus u squared times du. This is now like the problems we were doing in the previous video. We just distribute the u to the fourth and do the power rule on both. So we get 1 fifth u to the fifth plus 1 seventh u to the seventh plus c. u was tangent, so we get 1 fifth tangent to the fifth plus 1 seventh tangent to the seventh plus c. And that's the answer. Okay, so let's look at a different problem. And we're going to write it at the bottom of the screen. Let's scroll up a little bit. All right, and so problem two is going to be tangent to the fifth, secant to the third. And so I would like you to pause the video and think through which u substitution will work. Should we let u equal tangent? Should we let u equal secant? Do both approaches work? Or does neither approach work and we would need to come up with something else? So pause the video, see if we can figure that out, and then check it with me in just a few minutes. Okay, so if u equals tangent, then du is secant squared. And if you, we'll jot that down real quick. So if u is tangent, du is secant squared dx secant squared of x dx. And so we would need to rewrite everything in terms of tangent. After separating out secant squared, we would then have one power of secant, five powers of tangent. We wouldn't care that there are five powers of tangent because that's u. The fact that there's only one power of secant means there's not a good way to rewrite in terms of tangent, or at least not one that's useful for the integral. So we should not use that approach. What we should do is we should let u equal secant because then du is secant x tangent x dx. And when we separate that, that leaves four tangents and two secants. And then we have our secant x tangent x dx reserved for the du. Okay, so now u is secant, so then the one that we care about rewriting is the other one, tangent. The fact that that's the fourth power means that we're able to do that in a useful way. Remember that the identity is 1 plus tangent squared is secant squared. So then when we rewrite tangent to the fourth, we rewrite it as secant squared minus 1 squared times secant squared x times secant x tangent x dx. Now u is secant, so we can rewrite this as u squared minus 1 squared times u squared times du we distribute that so we get u to the fourth minus 2u squared plus 1 times u squared du. The u squared distributes so we get u to the sixth minus 2u to the fourth plus u squared du. That gets us 1 seventh u to the seventh minus 2 fifths u to the fifth plus one-third u to the third plus c. u was secant, so we get one-seventh secant to the seventh minus two-fifths secant to the fifth plus one-third secant to the third plus c. Okay. So then what we need to get good at is determining which u substitution works. So I'm going to put several problems on the screen and I'd like you to pause the video and see if you can come up which u substitution we should use. Should we use u equal secant? 
Should we use u equal tangent? Could we use both? Or would neither approach work? And so let's put several on the screen. So we'll do secant to the fourth x tangent to the seventh. All right, so pause the video and determine, should we use, we'll kind of make a chart. We'll say, would u equal secant work? Would u equal tangent work? So does that work? And does that work, yes or no? If they both work, great. If only one works, that's fine. If neither of them works, then we would not have a consistent strategy. So pause it, see if you can come up with it, and then we'll check it together in a minute. Okay. So the idea is that, again, whatever u is, we would, after separating du, we would need to rewrite the one that is not u in terms of u. So the one that is not u would need an even power after we separate out du. Well, if u is secant x, du is secant x tangent x. So on the first problem, if we separate out one secant and one tangent, then we're left with three secants and six tangents. And the one we then care about is tangent because u is secant. So the fact that secants to the third doesn't matter because that's just u to the third. The fact that tangent would be to the sixth means we can use u equals secant x because tangent to the sixth would be easy to rewrite in terms of secant. If u is tangent, then du is secant squared. If we separate out two secants from this problem, we would be left with two secants and five tangents. But in that case, u is tangent. So the fact that tangent has an odd power doesn't matter. The fact that secant has an even power does matter because we can then rewrite it in terms of tangent, where we would end up with not a fractional power, so not like the one half power or three half power. So in the first problem, both approaches make sense. Okay, now maybe pause the video and revisit the next three problems and see if you can make sure you are right about whether we can use these substitutions or not. Okay, so on problem two, if u is secant x, du is secant tangent. So we would take out one of each. We'd have five secants and four tangents. The fact that there's four tangents is good because that's an even power and that's the one we need to rewrite. For u equals tangent, du is secant squared. So if we split this up, we would have four secants. We would have uh, three, ta man, my bad. We would have five tangents. That's good, and so both work. All right, on the next problem, if we use u equals secant, du is secant tangent. So after separating, we'd have six secants and three tangents u would be secant, so the fact that tangent is to the third does not work. On the next problem, if u is tangent, or on the next substitution, du is secant squared, so we'd separate out two secants. That would leave five secants and four tangents. The fact that secant is an odd power means that that would not work well. On the last one, We've got u equals, if we use u equals secant, then du is secant x tangent x. That would leave four secants and two tangents. That means that we need to rewrite everything in terms of secant. The even power on tangent means this does work. On the, la on the other substitution, if u is tangent, du is secant squared. If we separate that out, we'd have three secants and all three tangents still. We would need to rewrite secant. So the fact that that has an odd power means it would not work. 
I'm going to put one more up, and I just want to make sure you're thinking this through correctly. And so let's do secant to the eighth x tangent to the sixth x dx. And again, pause the video and figure out which substitutions, if any, would work. Okay, so on the first one, if u is secant, du is secant tangent, that would leave seven secants and five tangents. That does not work well because u is secant, and we would need an even power on tangent at that point. On the second one, second substitution, if u is tangent, du is secant, that would leave six secants and all six tangents still. The fact that secant is to an even power means that works because we would need to rewrite it in terms of tangent. Okay, so when one of those two approaches works, that's what we should do. That's like the first two examples uh, in the video. When, that, when neither approach works, then there's not a consistent strategy. I do want to look at a problem where that's the case. So I want to talk about the integral of secant x dx. So if we go through the strategies above, you can't use either one. And so this is an integral where we actually don't have a formula to do it. And like I said, there's not a consistent strategy to do problems where, uh, where neither of these works. So in this case, we would need to come up with a creative way to try to do that problem. Here, we're going to do something very creative to do this problem. So when you have secant x, one way to do the problem is to write secant x as secant x over 1. And we choose to multiply by secant x plus tangent x over itself. The reason we do that is because if we now distribute the secant x, we get secant squared x plus secant x tangent x over secant x plus tangent x dx. Then we can do a u substitution where u is secant x plus tangent x. The reason this works well is because the du then is secant x tangent x plus secant squared x dx. That happens to be what's on top of the problem. So then we can rewrite this as 1 over u du because the du, other than the dx, the du is sitting on the top of the fraction. That means we get log absolute value of u plus c. That's log absolute value of secant x plus tangent x plus c. Okay, other problems involving powers of secant and tangent uh, work in various ways. You don't have to be this creative on all of them, but you'll see a few on the homework where you really should think about how to do those problems and try a couple of different approaches. Quickly, last thing on this video is that the same basic relationships occur between cosecant and cotangent. So the derivative of cotangent x is negative cosecant squared x dx. The derivative of cosecant x is negative cosecant cotangent x dx. And the Pythagorean identity involving those two is 1 plus cotangent squared is cosecant squared. So we can use exactly the same strategies, except for those negative signs you have to get in there for the du. But other than that, the exact same strategies work for integrals involving cotangent and cosecant. All right, definitely we should be practicing these problems. You have a lot um, on the homework to practice these before the next video. Uh, the next video is on trigonometric substitution, which is a brand new method. We have to be very comfortable with trig integrals in order to do that. So please spend time getting very comfortable with powers of sine and cosine and powers of secant and tangent before going to that video. All right, thanks for watching.